It's over for Fulio's female killer, Alicia Andrews, and Fulio's top op, Young and Ace. Alicia Andrews can't put it together in court or the interrogation room, and Ace can't stop snitching on himself. What's the last thing you invested in? <laughs> Both Alicia Andrews and Ace have gone viral over the past couple of days as they keep digging their graves deeper an inch closer to life behind bars. This is where they both messed up. Alicia Andrews viral footage. When four of the five involved in Fulio's murder were arrested, everyone instantly predicted that the female, Alicia Andrews, would start truth-telling behind closed doors, and it seems that she is already cracking. Her latest appearance in court is worrying, but her co-conspirators are the ones who should be worried because this girl is telling the cops all kinds of things in the interrogation room. From nervously biting her nails and fidgeting, it's clear that Alicia Andrews is scared and wants to get out of this situation. Clearly, she wasn't cut out for this life. Even her answers during the interrogation prove that she's an amateur and shouldn't be anywhere near gang life because she may just have put the final nail in her boyfriend's coffin and earned the entire group lengthy prison sentences. She waved at her boyfriend as she was let out of court. Maybe she knows that she won't be seeing him for much longer since he will be behind bars for life as she enjoys life out of prison. So how exactly is Alicia Andrews in a better position than the others? She made the first rookie mistake in the interrogation room. She answered the cops' questions. It's common knowledge that you shouldn't talk to cops. Well, Alicia Andrews wasn't briefed by the rest. According to police documents, Alicia Andrews was shown surveillance footage during the interrogation, and she made the fatal mistake of identifying herself in all the footage she was seen in. With this information, the prosecution can now prove that she was more than two hours away from home in another city and was at similar locations as the murder victim. But Alicia Andrews doesn't seem like the type to go down alone. She roped her boyfriend into her mess. Apart from telling on herself, she also gave cops information about her boyfriend. According to police documents, she identified Isaiah Chance as the male driving the suspect vehicle the Silver Cruise, which was tracking the victim's movements. Alicia Andrews may not have realized what she did. She had just handed her boyfriend, Gata Zay, a life sentence by revealing that he was also hours away from home in a city where the murder victim also was and admitted that he was driving one of the vehicles that were stalking the deceased rapper. Gata Zay and Alicia Andrews drove the Silver Chevy Cruise. Sean Gathright drove the other car used in the hit, a black Chevy Impala registered under his mother's name. On the day of the murder, Gata Zay and Andrews were seen in the Silver Chevy Cruise, following Fulio and his entourage. Surveillance cameras captured their every move, so Alicia Andrews' confession had directly tied her boyfriend to Tampa and placed him at the exact locations Fulio was at the day he was gunned down. But if you think that the snitching couldn't get any worse, Alicia told the cops that her boyfriend was using her phone to communicate with the other killers in the second vehicle. She was effectively admitting to the cops that her boyfriend had premeditated the murder, and with Gadaze being charged with first-degree murder, Alicia's testimony during interrogation means he is cooked. The silver Chevy Cruze and the black Chevy Impala then went to Truth 18 nightclub, where Fulio was scheduled to make another appearance. Once again, Gata Zay and Andrews were caught on surveillance video pulling into the club's back parking lot. However, police records reveal that Alicia denied any knowledge of the murder, but she's not a very good liar, as cops revealed that they caught her multiple times during the interrogation. One of the times she was caught lying was when she told cops that they had gone to both clubs to party. She even told cops that the couple walked up to the club to ask how much it was to get in. However, cops used surveillance footage at the front of both clubs to prove that the two didn't walk up to the club entrances but stayed at the parking lot. But this isn't the worst information Alicia Andrews gave cops. She even went ahead and placed her and her boyfriend at the exact location of the crime scene. After tracking Julio Fulio to multiple locations, the suspects followed him and his entourage to the home's two suites. The silver Chevy Cruze, driven by Isaiah Chance and Alicia Andrews, made two passes by the victim's parked vehicles before leaving the scene. This signaled the black Chevy Impala, which had Sean Gathright, Rashad Murphy and Davian Murphy to move in for the kill. Alicia Andrews admitted that she and her boyfriend were at the crime scene when the murder happened. However, she told cops that they were at the crime scene but were only lost and were only using the parking lot to turn around. She told cops they didn't know Fulio was at the location. Days later, Alicia Andrews would be handcuffed and jailed on a rainy day. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Keep walking. Now turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Immediately after the arrest footage surfaced, fans began to predict that Alicia would fold under pressure, and they were not wrong, as Alicia Andrews was the only one who talked and linked the suspects to Fulio's murder scene. After seeing her in court, it's no surprise that the internet is speculating that she will crack, but she isn't the only one to have a viral moment during this whole incident, as Fulio's top op, Young and Ace, went viral immediately after Fulio's murder was announced, and the details will shock you. Young and Ace viral footage. 
Immediately, Fulio's killers were caught. Everyone wanted to know one thing. Was Young and Ace involved? It seems the cops are not investigating the ATK rapper. So Young and Ace has long been known in Jacksonville. Um, we are consistently monitoring that group, those groups. Um, we have people that are always watching them. We don't have an investigation on him right now, but he can't move around in Jacksonville without us knowing about it. Although that was good news for Ace, it seems like he has thrown caution to the wind and is now acting really recklessly. He has been going viral for various reasons, which may land him in jail. Just hours before the murder, the rapper posted a now-deleted tweet that seemed to confirm that he knew what was about to go down in Tampa. That boy going the same day he came in, the post read, and hours after Fulio's death was confirmed, Ace released a new song titled Do It. The lyrics of Do It were clearly a diss towards Fulio. The Do It music video made it even more obvious. In the video, masked men are seen shooting another man in what appears to be a motel parking lot, which is similar to where Fulio met his death. In his defense, Ace revealed that he had recorded the track before Fulio was killed. I, I may do it, so look. Okay, okay, it was a long time. Because because as soon as I seen that, I'm like... It's all about capitalizing off the moments. Capitalizing off the so it's like, I had already shot that video like a week or two before. But Ace wasn't done disrespecting his dead op. Barely a week after releasing Do It, he released yet another track, Game Over, where he took his self-snitching antics to a whole new level. Right from the start of the music video, it's clear that it's a Fulio diss as they brandish a bottle of Don Julio, which Ace takes a sip off before starting the song. Ace took the disrespect to a new level when he took to Instagram to troll Fulio. While on Instagram Live, one of his fans, or maybe the feds, asked him a question that everyone had been dying to ask after Fulio, was tragically gunned down while celebrating his birthday. What did he think of Fulio's death? What he think about how Fulio dying, cuz? What he said next shocked everyone. He revealed that he and Fulio were homies and that he had even tried to advise him to get out of the streets. That shit is sad. Twin, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Y'all boys in the streets, y'all didn't leave the streets alone, twin. I don't condone this shit like that. It's so funny because me, bro, like, we cool, like, we was cool and shit. In an interview with DJ Academics, Ace was asked about his feelings when he found out that Fulio had been killed. Julio Fulio, or Fulio. From Jacksonville, someone that you know, um, he lost his life. Where were you when you found out about that? According to Ace, when he heard the news, he broke down and started crying. I was in the bed crying and shit like down. Like I said, it's out of here. Like, shit crazy. You shed a tear. Multiple. It's like, damn, life so short. It's like. Academics even asked Ace whether he had murked Fulio or even ordered the hit. Some people feel like you were behind that. And his answer spoke volumes. From his hesitation to answer the question to his evil laugh, something seemed off with Ace as he responded to the question. People feel like I'm behind a lot. Well, I'm not. I'm not behind. I'm working. I'm grinding every day. I'm grinding. I got a family. I'm working. Ace seemed to confirm that he had something to do with the hit during an appearance on a YouTube show where he was asked what he had last invested money in. What's the last thing you invested in? It seems Ace thinks he is untouchable, but the feds are closely watching his moves. And with his latest interviews and music videos dissing and trolling Fulio going viral, it wouldn't be a surprise to see him implicated in Fulio's murder. But it also seems that Fulio's killers have had viral moments of their own during the whole incident. Fulio's killers viral footage. Fulio's killers seem like they just don't care anymore, and their actions in court show that. Gadaze seems to have given up on the case and has since gone viral for some nasty trolling in court. During one of the court sessions, he was seen bobbing his head to Young and Ace's Who I Smoke during a court hearing. During a court hearing this month, Isaiah Chance appeared to be nodding along to a video posted by his gang aimed at disrespecting Julio Fulio's gang. The rapper seems to have thrown all caution to the wind. Maybe he has figured that his goose is cooked because all their moves were caught on 4K. The shocking story begins with a sinister plan hatched in Jacksonville, Florida, as Gattaze and Sean Gathright were caught on camera loading bags full of what prosecutors say were guns and ammunition. You see them carrying a bag large enough to what? Carry two AK-style rifles. After following Fulio throughout the night, they all ended up outside a home two suites. Outside the hotel, Fulio and his entourage were kept waiting outside by the hotel staff. According to Fulio's driver, Omerta 55, they were trying to check in their room but couldn't due to a glitch in the system. But we got to the hotel, um, went in. The rooms was already reserved, but I guess they had like a, a glitch in the system or something, so they ain't let us get the room. 
So then he came back out to the car and we were just chilling. But after Gadaze and Alicia confirmed that Fulio was at the hotel's entrance, the killers made their move. However, they were caught on a Tesla camera moving into position to carry out their plan. Following Fulio's murder, Isaiah chants even to Instagram to celebrate with an ominous message saying, now everybody can move on with life and focused, get a job, go back to school and be a full-time parent 100%, full-time college student, the war over with, entertainment dead. Police records also show that Rashad Murphy used Gathright's phone to send two separate disturbing text messages celebrating Fulio's death. The first one read, I'm coming home, my thirst is quenched, pop a bottle of Don Julio today. While the second message read, I'm coming home, my thirst is quenched, I love you. It turns out Rashad Murphy and Davion Murphy were cousins, and their involvement in the murder was personal. It turns out that someone from Fulio's crew shot and killed Rashad's little brother. But Fulio went ahead and did something that many consider even more disrespectful. Spaz, who was shot and killed in August 2018, was Rashad's little brother and Davian's cousin, whose memory was often disrespected by Fulio in songs. But Fulio took his disrespect to a whole new level. It's alleged that he was the one who went to Spaz's grave and pissed on it. No wonder Davian and Rashad Murphy celebrated his death without remorse. However, their celebrations didn't last long. On June 26th, just three days after the murder, cops made some progress. Sean was arrested in a 2004 Gold Forerunner for speeding through the streets of Jacksonville. During the stop, cops detected the strong smell of weed from the vehicle, giving them a reason to search it. In the center console, they found a Glock 19, a semi-automatic pistol. In the back seats of the SUV, deputies uncovered several bags of ammunition, along with firearm parts and accessories. Although released, Sean was arrested barely 24 hours later at a local Jacksonville shopping center. Driver! Open the car door! Let me see your hands! Back up to the sound of my voice! Yep. Stop right there! While in custody, Sean tried to make a run for it in the most hilarious way. According to police records, Sean was placed in an interview room and attempted to escape custody by climbing out through the ceiling. He climbed onto a table and tried to remove the tiles from the room's ceiling. Later in the day, Garaze was also put in handcuffs. But Rashad Murphy's arrest was the most dramatic. A day after the first three suspects were arrested, SWAT units were deployed to the Collins Preserve Apartments. Reports showed that Rashad Murphy had barricaded himself inside the house with a gun to his head, on FaceTime with his girl, and was refusing to surrender. After a tense standoff, Rashad Murphy surrendered just after midnight, ending the dramatic operation. Keep crawling! But the wildest moment of all is that the judge is convinced that they killed Fulio and has refused to grant them bail. I am finding that there is a substantial probability that all three defendants committed the dangerous crimes that they are charged with. Fulio's killers are just a piece of the puzzle in Jacksonville's ongoing gang war. Their viral videos aren't the only ones from Jacksonville that have taken the internet by storm, as murders, fights, and diss tracks have also caught the nation's attention. Jacksonville Gang War Viral Footage The Jacksonville Gang War is being caught on 4K with the raw footage of rival gangs gunning each other down going viral. One of the first shocking videos to take the internet by storm was the murder of Lil Buck in January 2020 at Dames Point Plaza, Jacksonville, Florida. At approximately 11 in the morning that day, an off-duty officer present at the scene witnessed the drive-by shooting that would claim the rapper's life. The officer gave chase as the shooter's vehicle sped away from the plaza. The chase was intense. The streets of Jacksonville becoming the backdrop for a pursuit that felt ripped from the pages of a crime thriller. Unable to evade the cops, the suspect's car crashed nearby. Two men emerged from the wreckage, their determination to escape leading them to commit a home invasion just a few blocks away. CCTV footage captured the two suspects jumping over fences to escape the cops. In a desperate attempt to evade capture, the men broke into a stranger's home, held the homeowner hostage, and changed clothes before finally making their escape. But that wasn't the only murder footage from the gang war that would go viral, because just one year earlier, a kidnapping that ended in a murder would go viral as the death was mocked by his ops on social media. While Fulio was alive, he showed no mercy to his ops, especially dead ones. The tragic death of Corbin Johnson became a regular target for Fulio. On the track Beatbox Remix, Fulio describes the gruesome kidnapping and murder of Corbin Odell Johnson. This man got kidnapped, bro. 
this man got his like, kidnapped, like real deal, lost and found type shit. Like. On July 11, 2018, Corbin was last seen at his mother's house after being dropped by his dad. By 6.30 in the evening on July 13th, the family officially reported Corbin missing. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office began their investigation but never made any progress. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and months into a year of agonizing uncertainty. As the first anniversary of Corbin's disappearance approached, a man clearing land off Utsi Road made a shocking discovery. Corbin's skeleton was found, wrapped and buried, bringing a tragic end to the search. Julio was all up on Instagram, making fun of Corbin after his bones were found. And Corbin, they let Corbin get kidnapped, man. That's crazy, man. The Corbin, I just stupid that kid out. They found a bones. He get kidnapped like a little baby, like a little boy. Julio took the disrespect to a whole new level as he mimicked Corbin the day he was kidnapped. I know he was crying. Please help! What the nigga said? Hell! <laughs> Death wasn't the only violence that has been going viral from the Jacksonville gang war, as the gangs have thrown hands a couple of times. One of the most viral moments was when Fulio and his cousin Kojak beat up fellow rapper Lil Papa in a mall. This incident was actually caught on camera as Fulio and two of his affiliates ganged up on Lil Papa and beat him up inside a Foot Locker store. The beating continued until one of Lil Papa's homies showed up to back him up, and Fulio and his goons ran away. Turns out Lil Papa and Fulio were actually close, and even had songs together. Another shocking thing you mentioned in the, in the record was Lil Papa. We got songs too. We got songs on, on YouTube and shit. We got him, we fought, I beat his ass type shit. <laughs> I had beat his ass and shit in the mall and shit. Me and my little cousin coach that beat his ass in the mall and shit. However, according to Fulio, Lil Papa had started sneak dissing him in his songs. Y'all don't hear the thousand sneak disses to say to me, uh, antagonize me and shit. But one of the most viral moments in the war wasn't sneak dissing. Both sides released some of the most disrespectful and evil diss tracks that took the internet by storm. In 2021, Ace and his crew released a diss that was considered a shocking viral hit. Having sampled Vanessa Carlton's 2001 pop hit, A Thousand Miles, the ATK members flipped the song and added outrageously violent lyrics. They rapped about murders and even mentioned the victims by name as they partied and drove around a golf course dressed in polo shirts and khakis. Within 11 days, the song had close to 9 million YouTube views, and now it has more than 50 million views. The song pissed off Fulio so much that he got in the studio and came up with an even more disrespectful and evil diss track. The video was even more disrespectful as he went to his dead ops graveyard with a news cut out of their deaths. The song has over 52 million views on YouTube. The Jacksonville War continues to give us viral moments, and we're here for it. And with Fulio's death, it seems there's only going to be more death as his affiliates look to get their get back. But as we wait for the next viral moment, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content if you enjoyed this video.